It's the NFL on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Packers and the Bucks under the lights on Monday night. And we're about five miles northwest of downtown Tampa at beautiful Raymond James Stadium near Florida's Gulf Coast. Tonight, we've got the crew set for what should be a real treat, a great Monday night matchup between the Green Bay Packers and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. This will be fielded inside the five. And they will wrangle it down a couple yards shy of the 30. Tampa Bay's offense set to take the field. And, of course, a quarterback, 23-year veteran, who's had a Hall of Fame career several times over, the great Tom Brady. For one month, many people thought they'd seen the end of the greatest quarterback career in league history. Of course, there were others who expected Tom Brady to come back, and he did so 40 days later for a 23rd NFL season. Leading the league in completions, yards, and touchdowns at age 44, he showed that he's as good as ever. But of course, losing in the divisional round, not the way he wanted to go out in his final game. For TB12, his Lombardi trophies are bust. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. They fake the handoff. Now Brady. A uh, quick throw knocked away and incomplete. Receiver coaches preach to their guys all the time. Separation, that's what's going to make the play successful. That time there was very little, and I think they were actually fortunate that it was only knocked away and not intercepted. And that's complete. It's Chris Godwin, and he is going to have a box first down. They needed five there on third down. He winds up getting seven. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. Wait, that... Fournette, a first down carry. Darnell Savage there to make the tackle. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it, and to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Throwing is Brady on third down. And that is incomplete. Oh, he did everything but hold on to it. But a nice play defensively, and now it brings up fourth down. That's a pretty good opening possession defensively. And you know the goal is to make something of a statement, especially on the road with your first defensive possession, isn't it? Go right out and establish yourselves and let them know this is going to be tough going all game long. And he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Green Bay's offense trots out, and just as it has been since week one of the 2008 season, Aaron Rodgers leads the way now in his 18th year of the National Football League. Even as he nears age 40, Aaron Rodgers' game isn't taking a single backward step. He became only the fourth player to win back-to-back -back MVP awards and led Green Bay to its third straight 13-win season. 
He avoids turnovers better than anyone in football at the quarterback position. And Green Bay, they are always a front runner with him under center. Caught on the right side by Jones. And not much happening there. He's taken down, but a late penalty flag in the backfield. And this looks like a roughing call. Well, Charles, sometimes we talk about the lengths officials sometimes go to to protect star quarterbacks, but that one, that was tough to argue against. Yeah, and I'm sure that everyone's going to say, hey, we're going to administer the penalty the same way for all quarterbacks. And oh, right away, he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try to get downfield. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Out of the pistol, it's Fournette. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 15 yards as Tampa Bay picks up the first. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. to give to Fournette. Now Brady. Oh, into a sea of defenders have intercepted. Devondre Campbell, the linebacker, picks it. And the Packers are going to get the football back at their own 17. Ah, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball. And I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. The Packers offense here coming back out for their second drive. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about what, the second sentence of the coach's address? And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. No score after one on EA Sports. The Packers with the football here to begin the second quarter. As they've got it second down and 12. Here's Rodgers. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw got him a little too far. It brings up third down. Shotgun now for Rodgers. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big game on his sights, but he could not reel it in. Every offense tells you they want to come out and start fast. That's not unusual at all. But this group, they've yet to get much rolling through their first two drives. It looks like they're going to have to give up the football again after this one. This is fielded at the 27. A pretty good punt there, but also a nice return of 12 yards. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And partner, I know so far, we're still in the first half, but you love this game as a defensive guy. Zero to zero. We'll see if the offense can get going on this drive. Well, you know how they talk about music to your ears? How about what it does for your eyes when you watch something like this, right? When these teams are locked in and going at it, no points going up on the scoreboard. I'm loving it. You're exactly right. Well, switch over, though, to an offensive mindset for a moment. What do they need to do here to get on track and get some points? Well, I think a couple of ways. Number one, you pull out something that maybe they haven't seen before. Coaches always talk about unscouted looks. Maybe you give them something that they haven't seen on tape, and now you shock them that way. The second... Run your basic playbook, but run it so well that you give your skill position guys a chance to make big plays individually. 
And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. 13 yards, the tally on the return there. And it'll be Packer football here, first down and 10. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. We've seen both of these offenses still sort of in that figuring things out phase, but I suspect some action on the scoreboard soon as they start out here first and 10. Rodgers throw here pulled in by Lazard. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. A first down catch for Alan Lazard has turned out to be a personal favorite of quarterback Aaron Rodgers. He's carved out a nice role in this Packers receiver rotation. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now the man from UTEP, this is Aaron Jones. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. The safety, Antoine Winfield, got in there that time. A free safety blitz. That can be a gamble, but it proves fruitful there. Yeah, you're exactly right about the gamble because oftentimes the free safety is the last line of defense against a long pass. And when he comes at the quarterback, he'd better get home and make the play. Otherwise, a big play could result for the offense. Rodgers now, after the sack, he'll lead the pack up on third and long. Rodgers with a give. It's Aaron Jones. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. They get 15, but they still need a little bit more. Fourth down. I know they want to go for it here, and I know that their fans want them to go for it, but listen, I'm going to play head coach right here and look at the facts. Tie game, plus, even if you get the first, you still got a half a field to go. I'll go ahead and punt the football myself. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Pat O'Donnell, to kick it away. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. Well, the Bucks going to take over now late in this first half as they will take over here with a little more than 30 seconds remaining. Just over 30 seconds to go in the half. They've got it first and 10. To throw, it's Brady. And it's caught. It's Chris Godwin. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A good pickup there, 26 yards. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Now Brady. And that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and 10. Gonna let it fly for Rudolph. That's caught inside the 20. And they'll wind up getting this with all the way down inside the 20. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. This a 33-yard attempt. Suckup's kick is good, and that will do it for this first half. So we've hit halftime, just a field goal separating these two teams at the break.
As we send you a stone throw away across I-4 to Orlando, there standing by is Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? All right, BG, thanks very much, and welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. First up, though, a look at the next-gen stats for the Packers in that first half. And I can imagine the halftime discussions are about how can we improve the running game? They have not had success so far, and it's reflected on the scoreboard. In a game where one field goal is all these offenses could muster in the first two quarters, you figure both coaching staffs were needing to make plenty of adjustments. And for the call of the second half, we send it back out to Brandon God. Yes, indeed, Coach. Thanks. Hey, we could use a touchdown. 3 nothing as we welcome you back in. And the half will begin with a touchback. The Packers ready to go to start quarter number three. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Throwing is Rodgers. He's got a man complete. Pass the 20. Touchdown, Packers. Romeo Dobbs, 76 yards. And the Packers come right out of the locker room and score here in the opening minute of the third quarter. For as big and strong as some of these guys are, especially when you see them in full pads, it is sometimes hard to appreciate how truly fast they can move. That was incredible. Well, in this league where coordinators worry so much about drawing up the right routes, blocking assignments, misdirections and stuff, they have these precise arrows and movements. Sometimes the best plays just come from the schoolyard where you look at your fastest guy and say, go long, go get it, big man. And the final clocking on the next-gen stats there. How about this? 22.1 miles per hour. Wow. Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. Taking in at the three. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. And Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense, they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth, almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just, you know, our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out and doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side, trying to match each other. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take it the distance, but a short yardage trying to pick up first downs. That big guy, always a nice luxury to have, isn't he? So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now Brady. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. Line of scrimmage, the 43 on second and four. Brady now to throw. That's to Evans, and what a nice catch that is. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers 33. That one goes for 24 yards. Now what we're seeing, this is much better from this offense because so far in this game, no touchdown to this point. And what's usually a direct correlation? Very few explosive plays. That's been their issue. Not able to make that big shot downfield or break one off, but a nice game there for a first down. On play action, now Brady. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. 
That time, multiple defenders getting pressure, and it's a loss of six. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa. It's Buccaneer football, but they've got work to do. They find themselves behind here to start the fourth quarter. Now well, Brady gets away with one. Lucky could have been intercepted, but it falls to the ground. A partner guaranteed they approach this play with the idea of making up ground to make third down manageable. Unfortunately, with that incompletion, right back where they started on the last snap. Now they need a big third down play in order to pick up the yardage needed. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. And that will wind up just short. He had it on line. It ran out of gas at the end, and that will keep this a four-point game. All things considered, a pretty good kick. Just cruel punishment there to be denied by the crossbar. If you're going to hit from that distance, sometimes you're going to need a little luck. And unfortunately for him, this time the break goes against him. The Packer offense ready to get their next drive underway. A throw complete to the tight end, Tunyon. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. Now Rodgers. This is Cobb with a catch right side. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Oh, they'll try the jet sweep here with Lazard. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Running right, Jones. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. It's a gain of 16 and a first down for the green and gold. Aaron Jones, you know, not one of the bigger backs in the league, 5'9", 208, but he's definitely what you'd call a downhill runner, and he's able to shed the tacklers there for good yardage. Yeah, in this part of the game, the fourth quarter, this is where a running back really has a chance to shine. This is what they've been training for, to take over the game down the stretch. The defense, it's been battered all game long. And here, this is just a case of a runner imposing his will and deciding he didn't want to be tackled right there. And the next-gen stat shows us the tale of how much yardage he was able to pick up after the initial contact. So it's Packer football here as we welcome you back. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. And they'll keep on the ground with Jones. And some determined running there as he'll pick his way down to the 12-yard line. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. Now a first down carry by Jones. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. They'll go again to Jones. Oh, no, he lost the football. And the Buccaneers have it. Now the Bucs going to use the first of their timeouts as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this fourth quarter. You better down a score in the fourth quarter than Tom Brady. This is first and ten. He's got a man complete. And he's brought down. They took a big shot there. It pays off. A solid gain downfield. Now the 
big play pushes him all the way out to the 40 now for first down. Back to throw, Brady. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And this ball incomplete. Uh, looked very much to be a catchable ball. He could not hang on. Second down coming up. Brady to throw. He's going to let it fly. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. So now third and ten. A big play to start the drive, but nothing since. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Now they do indeed get the timeout, so all is not lost. They'll have a chance for one final heave to the end zone. I like the fact that he took the shot deep downfield. Even if you don't get the catch, maybe you get a defensive penalty and pick up the yardage that way. This for all the marbles. And did he catch it? He did. A touchdown. One of the most improbable finishes in recent history. They've won it on the final throw. Charles, that drive was perfect. Methodical, executed so well, and they grabbed that lead with almost no time left for a last gas from the other side. No way you could have drawn up a better final drive because not only did they keep their eyes on the end zone, they made sure they bled the clock out as well and denied their opponent a chance to respond. That's just terrific situational football to end this one. Well, obviously, Charles, this was by no means an offensive track meet. I mean, the defenses were the story in this ball game, but, hey, they got enough points to get the job done, and at the end of the day, that's all that matters. You're absolutely right about that part, man. In such a low-scoring game, it completely changes everything you had planned to do out there. Fortunately for them, they got just enough scoring to bring home the win, and in this type of a game, to play their defense, that became one of their biggest keys.